With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, we shall be reading from the Gospel according to Mark, the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10 and verse 17. Mark 10, 17. And I will be reading through to verse 31. Mark 10, 17. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is, God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, One thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at, he, at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And the last first. Amen. A very known story we have read, brethren, with regards to a man who went to Jesus. And while we read the Gospels, the four Gospels of the four evangelists, we can see many people going to Jesus because they wanted to be blessed by him. And this man, he didn't want any, anything materialistic. But what he wanted and what he requested from Jesus was something really good. Something that every one of us today is seeking. The kingdom of God. Because we know Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest will be added to you. So this man, having very good motives, according to the word of God, he went to Jesus with respect, with reverence. He knelt before him. The word of God says he ran towards him and he knelt and he spoke to him and said, good teacher. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the first thing Jesus did, brethren, is to introduce himself. He asked him and said, why do you call me good? Because no one is good but one, that is God. So indeed, he introduced himself being, yes, the son of man, but at the same time, the word of God, the son of God. And indeed, he is good. Indeed, he is gentle. And he accepts everyone 
who goes to him. And this man wanted now and he was anticipating Jesus' response. We do not know what he had in his heart, what he expected to listen by Jesus. Maybe he knew beforehand and he was ready. However, if he knew everything, there was no need for him to go to Jesus. He knew that he lacked something. Something was missing. That's why he went to Jesus. That's why he preferred to go and ask. Because he felt that something in his life does not let him to feel that he had the kingdom of God in his heart. That's why he went to Jesus. And Jesus Christ responded to him. And he said, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Still, the gap in his heart was there. Still, he was feeling that something was missing. He knew the commandments. And you know something, brothers and sisters, everyone at the time when Jesus was on this earth and he was walking among the multitudes, everyone knew the commandments. Everyone went to the synagogues. Everyone listened to the word of God and the prophets and Moses. Everyone knew the commandments. And, but this man was exceptional because he said with boldness to Jesus, he knew to whom he was spoken to. And he said to Jesus, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Whatever you said to me, I've done. And I keep doing them. And then, brothers and sisters, Jesus started speaking as the true word of God. Who knows everyone's heart? You know, many times, brethren, we read the word of God. We read, we increase our knowledge. We are confident that we know many things because we have a good knowledge, we have heard amazing things, we have heard people who have spoken beautiful analysis of the Word of God and we have heard many people talking about the Jewish history, the Jewish traditions. We have heard so many things with regards to the Word of God. So our knowledge has become massive in our minds. But there is a point when knowledge stops. And that point is when Jesus opens his mouth and speaks to you and to me as the word of God. And that's exactly what he did to this man. And he said to him, because Jesus looked at him, he loved him and said to him, one thing you lack. Forget about the commandments. Forget about Moses. Forget about the prophets. Forget about everything. Because yes, indeed, everything else you have. But there is one thing that you lack. And brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is here today to speak to, speak to every one of us according to the things we lack. We didn't come here to listen to things that we know. That's why we're here. But we came this morning in the church of Jesus Christ 
to listen to the, to the word that will come out of the mouth of Jesus concerning the one thing we lack. Every one of us today knew this story. Every one of us. We have the knowledge. But we do not know what we lack. There is always a gap in our hearts that we are trying to fill in with things that we believe and we know and we, we think that they are good. Maybe if I have a great revelation that no one ever had, that will cover this gap in my heart. It won't. Maybe if I listen to Jesus speaking loudly and clearly in my ears, I will fill this gap. Why? Because I want to come here and share it with you. Oh, I listen to the voice of the Lord. Wow. And what happened? It was difficult for me to follow it. <laughs> and this man wanted to listen to the word out of the mouth of Jesus. However, when Jesus spoke to him and he said to him, Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and cup, take up the cross and follow me. This man, brethren, he knew very well about the cross of Jesus Christ. He knew it. That's why Jesus spoke to him that way. He knew it. Also, he knew what to follow Jesus means. He knew it. That's why Jesus asked him to follow him. But the one thing that he lacked, he didn't want to let go. Maybe this morning, brothers, sisters, we listen to the word of God. We know that things in our lives are not according to the word of God. But you know something? We do nothing about it. And you know something? Sorrow will come and dwell in our hearts because of our disobedience. And because we do not want to comply with the word of God. Because we feel that we do everything except this one thing. But you know, this man here, he fulfilled all the law, all the commandments and everything. But the fact that he knew everything and he did everything from his youth didn't make him to leave Jesus and be joyful. He left with sorrow. If this morning, brothers and sisters, we leave as we came, with no change in our hearts, but doesn't add anything to our salvation. But if only we add one small stone in the building that Jesus Christ has built with his word on the foundation which is called Jesus Christ, if we add one more stone of obedience, and of acceptance of the word of God, today we will live joyful from the church of Jesus Christ. Not as this man left with sorrow. Everyone who used to go to Jesus until that time and after that time, they used to live full of joy. They wanted to follow Jesus. They left with joy in their hearts. They left healed. They left alive. They left having a, a better knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. But this man, he left with sorrow because he didn't want to let go of his possessions. While I was praying, brethren, the Lord came and he came with a very strict voice in my heart. Your knowledge, he said, will not save you. 
The things that you know will not bring you into salvation. Your obedience will bring you to salvation. If you let go of all the things that you know and you come and get the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then the knowledge that you had will become action in your life. You will start living according to the knowledge, not that you know, but the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is exactly what happened to Apostle Paul. He knew the commandments, he knew the, the, the law, inside out. Inside out, he had books. He had everything. He read history. He read about philosophy. He read so many things. His education was amazing. But it was a fruitless knowledge. And if I know the word of God inside out, but I do not live according to the word of God, my knowledge is fruitless. My knowledge has no outcome in my salvation. And the question is, why don't I want to change myself and start walking according to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his word? Why don't I want to fill in this gap that I have in my heart? Because now, if I have something that I lack, brothers and sisters, that give only possibilities for me to enter the kingdom of heaven. If the Lord comes this morning and asks you personally, will you be in the rapture of the church if I come now? What is your response? What is your response? What, what is my response? 50-50? 60-40? 30, 70? Why? This man, when he went to Jesus, he had in his perception 100% possibilities that he will enter the kingdom of God. But when he heard the words that Jesus Christ said to him, he felt that he is 100% out of it. <laughs> but the commandment but all my efforts, but all my reading, all my study, all my prayers, everything that I, done, I did in my life, he left sorrowful from Jesus. This is a lesson, brothers and sisters, for all of us. For all of us. We must stop, play with possibilities, but we will enter the kingdom of God. There may be one small thing that stops the presence of God to come in your life. See your present. How do you live your present? Are you in peace? Or you are always whinging, raising your voice, Arguing, trying to convince others of your righteousness. Let's stop doing this, brethren. And let's go back to the Lord. And ask him and say, Lord, where do you see me? Where do you see me? Where I am? Because I do not know. I don't know what's happening to me. I want to do what is good, but I can't. Because I have all this secular desires in my heart that stop me to go closer to you. I see the world and I like it. I see how people in the world live and I like it. I like this lifestyle. Why do you like the lifestyle? What will add to your life? What? And brothers and sisters, we strive to have more and more and more. This man had the same desire. He had his possessions. He was rich. And Jesus Christ 
comes later and says to his disciples, how hard is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Why then should I envy the world because of their lifestyle? That will make myself hard to enter the kingdom of God. This lifestyle that I envy will lead me to hell. Will lead me to places that I do not want to be. That like the rich man when he passed away, when he died, he was looking towards Abraham and Lazarus and he enjoyed everything in his life on earth. But then he was looking towards Abraham and Lazarus and he only wanted a drop of water on his lips because he didn't care about the aftermath. He only cared about his presence. Now, maybe I will have a small joy, a small indulgement in my life. Let's, let's take it. I will go to the movies and watch a beautiful movie. And watch it. Oh, it's beautiful, fantastic. Yes, for two hours. For two hours. And then my heart is empty. I will go and do things as the world does. And these indulgements will last not for long, brethren. But yes, tomorrow, next day, I will have the joy to share with my colleagues. Oh, I went and saw this movie. Oh, it was nice. Oh, this actor. Oh, it's fantastic. Who cares? Who cares about the actors? You know, sometimes I, I start forget names of famous people, and I felt that, oh, what's happening with my memory? <laughs> but then I say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to remember them. I don't want to know them. Because before you, they are abominations. I don't want to know them. Or what they do in their personal life. Tell me one famous person, brothers and sisters, who is not divorced. One. Everyone is known because of their sins. And because we have this knowledge, we still keep it in our lives. And we keep adoring them. Why? Why? We want to have the same lifestyle because they promote it. Everywhere, in the social media, everywhere. Promotion, promotion. See how I live. I don't care. This is your life. You expose your sin and you don't get it. The problem is not that, brethren. The problem is what I do. Do I take this promotion and I make it mine and I want to live like that? Why? I will lose the kingdom of heaven. And then I will pray for a drop of water to come onto my lips. Because sometimes we say, yes, that was the rich man from the story. No, it may be you. If you do not regret and do not repent and come back where you belong, to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we live in the last days. We have to realize that. Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming and he wants us all to be around him in his kingdom. Touching him. Looking at him. Worshipping him. Lift our hands to him. Just to go in his arms. Hug him. Because he saved us. We were sinners and he saved us. But now, brothers and sisters, we are trying to become rich in our lifestyle, in our imagination, in what we watch, in how we live make things better than others. And you know, the other thing that the Lord showed me while I was reading this, brethren, is that we read this story and we think of a rich young man. You know something? Today, I do not see anyone poor. 
who is poor today? <laughs> who is poor today? Who is sitting under the table of the rich man and he waits to get some, crumb, some crumbs to eat? Who is having dogs licking their goons? No one, brethren. We are all rich. And if we do not repent, it will be very hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of God. Because for someone to be rich is not to have billions or millions, is to live a comfortable life. And if they stop doing the will of God, nothing will change in their lives. They will continue to have food on their table. They will continue to have drinks on their table. They will have everything, clothes, a house, heating, chill in the summer. We have everything. The Lord has provided and we live in a place that everything has been given to us. Brothers and sisters, if we see someone who is richer, that doesn't mean that we are poor. <laughs> Let's make ourselves easy to go to the kingdom of heaven. How? By obeying to the word of God. By repenting. By seeking forgiveness from the Lord. Because we want to live with him in eternity. That's exactly what our goal is. If it is. Because sometimes we forget about this. Our routine, our everyday life, blares our goal. But this morning, brothers and sisters, the Lord is pleading with us and he's asking, refresh your goals. Look at my eyes. Look at the kingdom of heaven and come closer to me. Let go of everything that may, may make you feel stronger. Let them go. Come into weakness and receive my strength, which is a different strength. It will be a strength that will give you power to confess the name of Jesus Christ. It will give you strength to live in a godly way with love and respect from the Lord and not make yourself hard to enter the kingdom of heaven. Make it easy. And you know something? For this man it was easy. Because Jesus told him, let everything that you have, let everything go that you have, sell them, give to the poor, and come follow me. You will become a disciple of mine. You will sit on a throne you will receive all the blessings that I have prepared for my disciples. And you will have, as he said to his disciples, a hundredfold. Now, in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. So again... The Lord will make you rich. <laughs> and you will have everything. I was thinking, brethren, you know, in the Acts of the Apostles, when the Holy Spirit came for the first time on people, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, there were somewhere 100, 120, not more. In an hour or so, they became thousands. In one hour, they became thousands. And in a few days, tens of thousands. And it started from 100, 150 people, if that. The Lord is here to make you rich spiritually. Not with huge wealth, but will stay on this earth. Also, about the rich people, brethren, Jesus Christ said them one beautiful story. It's um, in Luke 12 and verse 15, 16. You don't have to open your Bibles. I will read it for you. Then he spoke a parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Where am I rich today? Where am I rich today? Do I have riches in the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Or I know just a portion of him, a small portion. Brethren, the knowledge of Jesus Christ will never stop. And you know something? It's given freely to everyone who asks for it. The Lord will continue revealing himself until the day he will come and rapture us. And also, rich people, yes, they can be saved. But they have to will to be saved. Like Zacchaeus. Remember when Jesus was walking past his city and he heard that his, Jesus was coming, he wanted to go and see him. But listen to the details now. The word of God says, brethren, that Zacchaeus, when Jesus was walking past his city, the word of God says, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Listen now to the difference. Rich man, who had the confidence that he was fulfilling all the law, the commandments, everything was perfect. On the other, on the other hand, this tax collector, nothing was perfect. He was not confident at all. But he also wanted to see Jesus. And he sought to see how, who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Do you know why? <laughs> he changed all his household. Zacchaeus only wanted to see him. But Jesus saw in his heart that he wanted to be changed. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, what a prayer, brethren. What a change. Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So you see, yes, rich people will enter the kingdom of heaven. But how? They will be poor to enter the kingdom of heaven. By letting everything go. Because now Jesus, brothers and sisters, 
He is restoring our hearts, not our wallets. It's not his purpose to restore our wallets, but our hearts. Because with our hearts, we will enter the kingdom of God. Everything else will stay here. Let us now, brethren, change our ways. Let us change. And let's go on our knees. Ask Jesus. Good Lord. Jesus Christ. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And you will hear his voice in your heart. Whatever he says to you, don't try to send it away. Try to keep it in your heart and ask him to help you if you can't, and he will. Because that's his purpose, to strengthen us when we are weak. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen.